what's up, y'all? This is Dave TV, and we are in San Antonio Vans Warp Tour, the 21st time around. It makes me feel old every time I say it. I saw the second one. So, <laughs> and uh, Born Cage is here with us in person, uh, all the way out of New York. So, uh, Texas a little different than New York. I don't know how much time you guys get to spend there, but uh, yeah, we we've been in Texas a bunch. We played it South by Southwest uh, past two years. Past two years, and we love it there. We yeah, and when you do that, you're you're there for a week, you know. So you, with War Tour, you don't get to experience any city really. Uh, Except for maybe saying hello to the people who live in them, but that's about it. You don't get to explore anything. That's but not true. I went for a run this morning and did, really? did some exploring. You did some exploring? I did, but that's rare. Yeah. I'll probably never run again. This is not a bad part of the town to do that yeah. in. So it's all right. There's this, uh, I know this one thing about San Antonio, I think. There's like this Mexican fast food place that's pretty good. Can you name something? Maybe it's not fast food, but it's like there's two locations. There's one in San Antonio and one somewhere else. Somebody, like a, not ch churros, but I feel like I know what you're talking about too. Cha chas. No. See, when I talk about San Antonio, like somebody swears Tia Maria, I think it is. But man, I if it was Austin, I'd tell you every one. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I very rarely come out to San Antonio. Yeah. Um, it's probably good that I don't uh -huh. know where that's at. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a wealth of, of fine foods here for sure. But if you do figure it out, I'll give you my card and you let me know. Bus call is one thirty, so maybe we can go get it after the show. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Carlos, absolutely. Uh, did I read you guys played with Guns N' Roses? Yeah. What? Yeah. So yeah, you know, I wanted because I was a fan of the original lineup and Axel this and that, so I wanted to hate it, you know, yeah. and just out of loyalty to the original. I saw that band that he's got that blew me away yeah. i was hugely impressed so yeah. how, how did that go down uh, it was really fun uh, it was our seventh and eighth shows as a band so it was the, and i i had just started singing uh the second show i was deathly ill the most sick i've the sickest i've ever been um on on stage and somehow we pulled through it made some new fans Credited a little extra hard on the guitar that, those nights. Um, it was yeah. I just got a, like a random phone call from our manager saying, "Hey, um, I think it was Richard Portis um, or the other guitar player. Uh, he has like a bump, bumble foot. Uh, bumble. bumble foot. Bumble foot. Yeah. One of them liked our music and asked us to play a show. So obviously we're like, oh yeah, sure. Still probably our biggest shows to date." Uh, and um, and then after the first night, they, they asked us for to, to play another show. And then, yeah, it was, it was really fun. It was cool. Probably not your normal fan base. <laughs> Definitely no. not. No, no, people were there paying $500 tickets to see Guns N' Roses. Not, not this, like, new indie all rock band from New York City. Like, nobody gave a shit. But, no, some people did give a shit. So we made some fans, and, and it was a great experience for us, yeah. There's never a bad ear to play to, yeah. never. Except so the one guy who was like, you guys fucking suck. <laughs> That's a bad ear to play to, that guy. He was punch Axel in the mouth. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, we didn't, we met also, the, we met the band, they were amazing. We didn't meet Axel, but his Escalade almost hit us when it was like swerving down in the parking lot pretty cool uh, that would have been a good story or a lawsuit or a good lawsuit <laughs> we definitely would have lost <laughs> but, yeah. so uh recordings what do you got out there for the people to listen to how do we hear you we have a new album called i'm glad i'm not me it just came out this month early this month and um yeah check it out it's everywhere it's in, it's in stores we have it on vinyl it's on all the digital like Spotify, Google Play, whatever you use, Amazon, iTunes. iTunes. Um, so yeah, we and we're also selling it here. If you're at any of these shows this summer, come by our merch tent. Do you guys uh, make that decision to go? Hey, we're going to put it on vinyl. A lot of people doing that now. I love vinyl. Yeah. Or how does that happen? Um, I don't know. I guess it's a conversation we have with our label and, and managers, and then we just. 
we definitely, honestly, like when when you when we held when I held that for the first time, that's when they felt more real than a CD. Yeah, the vinyl looks really good. It looks really it looks good. Great. And yeah. it sounds, it that. really does sound great. Like it sounds amazing. Yeah. So. Well, that's cool. So, how long have you guys been playing as a unit together? Um, we've been a band since 2011, in this formation since last year. But uh, yeah, we feel like we've really grown into ourselves and found ourselves. So it's been. I guess not that long since we did we've done that, so it it's still kind of kind of new for us in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of wondering, like you know, to get where you are as far as a local scene, did you do that in New York? Or oh, yeah. yeah. How was it as far as nurturing uh, fellow bands and stuff? Like, do you have a community there? Is it one, each for their own? Or? There's somewhat of a community, but it's yeah. Sometimes like uh, I don't know we. Granted, like uh, us at Warped Tour, we're like, you know, like like black sheep. the black sheep yeah. for sure. And in New York, we're not as much of a, you know, just like out not outcast. Maybe that's a negative word, but we just don't sound like people at Warped Tour here. But um, uh, at home, it's a little closer. But at the same time, there's still like it's not competitive, really. It's, it's not that. We've I mean, made a bunch of friends that are bands out there, and like. Play shows together, and we share fans, and yeah, yeah, it's cool. What uh, what kind of stuff did y'all listen to growing up? I'll start with you. What, what kind of stuff did you listen to growing up? I was really into uh, the Beach Boys, the Beatles, um, Nirvana, probably those three most. A little Black Sabbath, yeah. yeah. Those first harmonies like crazy with the Beach Boys and the Beatles. Of course, yeah. that's great, man. Awesome. And you? Me, uh, I I started out. I started falling in love with music when I started playing the guitar, so I listened to a lot of blues. Um, I don't know. I loved Steve Ray Vaughan, um, and I, I did like Guns N' Roses too. Uh, and I don't know. I when I got into music for songwriting, that um, I mean, like songs that I, you know, I was listening to that type of music for the the playing, the, the you know, uh, the technical stuff but then when I uh, like the hooks and stuff like that I I don't know yeah of course I was I was raised um, hearing the Beatles Elvis um, my grandmother had like a cassette tape uh, I used to listen to uh, like Vivaldi my mother used to play that for me a lot um, but then and then I like I guess I, I bought is this it by the strokes that was that was a kind of a I was like wow I've never heard anything like this before and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been like that whole thing in the in the early two thousands. Yeah. Great time in the music. I heard all that coming out. I was like, ah, oh, something's yeah, gonna happen now. Thankfully, you know. Lyrics and like all those bands like coming out at the same time. Yeah. Um, to get a chance, Jimmy Vaughn is still making a lot of really great music, yeah. and he's uh, played on lots of folks' records. He's keeping the blues legend stuff alive. It's well worth a listen if you have time. He, I think he gave a speech for when he got inducted to the yeah. Yep. Played with Double Trouble and uh, great stuff. Yeah. I, I think we get a lot of uh, noise for Gary Clark Jr., who's who's great, and I'm glad it's happening for him. But uh, Jimmy taught Stevie to play, and Jimmy's still making music, and it's amazing. So you mentioned Stevie. I have to throw out Jimmy. He's amazing. So, yeah. And you? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I grew up with, like, a couple of my best friends whose older brothers were, like, in a ska band. So... That's kind of what got me started into music. So I started uh, ska to like pop punk, and I went through a rap phase, and now I'm in this like I just started listening to like Chicago, and I'm weird, man. Dude, I went to see Air Supply Friday night. So who's weird? <laughs> Classic rock and like love ballads are like really cool to me. I don't know why. I think they're awesome. They're magical things, dude. Absolutely, for sure. I, I'm all AM radio started my like whole thing into music, which was. You know, pop for sure growing up. But uh, then I found Kiss and ACDC and was metal for so long and nothing more, yeah. which I'm glad I did. But after I learned to open up, man, it's like I'm all yeah, over like, the map. It's so yeah, much it's different. Same, yeah. It's also, yeah, like pop music and like they go through different waves like of what is pop music. Yeah. Like Bruce Springsteen was like a straight up pop artist. And now it's like considered more, what, maybe classic rock leaning. I don't know, maybe not because he's still playing. But. I have music for everything these days. If I'm like taking a shower, I have, like, shower music. I'll listen to, like, like, Metric. If I'm, like, working out, I'll listen to, like, Metric. Attila, you know? <laughs> Metric? 
Yeah, I love Metroid. I love Metroid. Wow, how about that? You know, awesome. I, uh, in, in our last interview, they said if you could trade places with anybody, who would it be? And I said Emily Haynes. Oh, <laughs> oh man. That's awesome. I would be like, oh, this is my body. <laughs> That's what it was. That was it. It wasn't a sexual thing, honestly. Like, she, I obviously, like, you know, it's something about her. It's not even, like, a sexual thing. I just, like, love, I love the band, yeah. They're big fans. They're waiting to meet you. That's what it is. <laughs> big fans waiting to meet you. They're like, you can't hold them back and scream and cram. So, um, so, yeah, please stop. I've been asking guys kind of as a wacky question, if you remember, what was your last Google search? Oh, it's probably something like, it's probably some actor's name in a movie because I'm always like, who's that? Um, I wonder if I can say it. Yeah, I forget. I could check that too, though, really quick. The, uh, the last uh, one actually was about an actor. It was like the guy in all those movies. Now it didn't, you know, wasn't enough information. So, but uh, yeah, you know, we're gonna we're gonna look into that for him. How about you? You remember? Um, yeah, you know, I had a package that uh, got lost in UPS. So I was looking up UPS's uh, number. Yeah. Okay, I have my recents right here. Bass player, Emotion City soundtrack, because they were on the tour and we hung out with them and. Uh, Forgot his name, <laughs> and then not shuffle on Spotify because I had my Spotify on shuffle and they kept, I was so pissed off because I finally like paid for it, and now I the reason is I want to fluidly listen to yeah and not just that but like I want to enjoy albums for what they are because that's like the track listing and the sequence thing like this is a big part of like making an album especially for the, some of the bands I like there's some bands who just throw them out it's like single single single. Anyway, so I wanted to listen to it in the right order, how they intended us to hear it. Can you turn that off? I turned it off. I Googled it and it worked. You can turn it off. You can. It was, a, it was kind of like a tricky way. I mean, I, I must have messed it up at some point myself. It wasn't. But it, I did. I fixed it. I listened like Iron Maiden all the way through, you know, front to back. So. And you? What we was? Oh, uh, it, it, no, yeah, no, it wasn't actually. It was like, um, why does my back hurt so bad? <laughs> It's all the crazy sex you have on Warp Tour. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, with like, <laughs> yeah, never mind. Hey, left hand somebody else. <laughs> I'm not even gonna do it, man. Born <laughs> cages, you guys. Thank you so much for tolerating me, man, and yeah. uh, thanks for taking time to do Dave TV. I really appreciate it. Great to meet you, fellas. And uh, Dave. Hope, Dave, I am. I like that. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll uh, see you in Austin. I'm out of Austin, so yeah. come see us sometimes. We'll probably be there next March. Yeah, first South by. Awesome. Thank you, fellas.